Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Cassell, and I want to show you how you can use this really simple applet to make a graph of your data. You'll notice it said click on the number over here to select a data point that you don't want to include. I'll actually do that with my data because as you saw, we had one trial where we didn't get any sort of crater formation and flower splatter and that isn't really what we thought would happen, but we had to move on. So um, here's what we're going to do, right? The thing that I was changing was the mass, right? This was the ounces of water that was in the water bottle. Over here, the thing that I was measuring, my dependent variable, was the ejecta distance. So in other words, it's the evidence that there was a force of impact. So this is in inches for me, but depending on what you had, that hand to measure, you might have a different unit here. We're looking for a relationship. We're not going to be calculating something using a formula this time. So now I'm going to enter in the data points that I had from my video. So you wrote those down. You'll be able to just type those in. Once you've got your own, you'll be able to put those in. I'm not putting the units in, just the numbers. So you'll see that I get this nice little data table, and it's plotting my points for me over on the other side, which is super helpful, especially when we're doing this at home and most of us don't have graph paper. I have graph paper because I'm a nerd, you guys, but, but uh, you know, if I wasn't a science teacher, I'm not sure I would have a bunch of graph paper sitting at home. All right, so I'm going to leave out number three. So I think it said if I click on it, it will not include it. Does it appear or disappear? I don't see. Oh, it does. Look, see, it got all gray, so it's not included. So now I've got my data points plotted right here. They look like a bunch of randomness, and this is what real science is all about, okay? If we were in class, we would have collected these data points because we would all be using the same equipment. We would have averaged them together, so we would have essentially eight trials per mass that we were testing. So we'd be able to really eliminate the error and variability in our data. Instead, we've got what a single human being collects. We would obviously do this experiment again if we wanted real valid data. So for this simple single run through though, I can click this curve fit button right here and it's asking me what kind of line do I want. I'm gonna go for best fit. This linear is what I'm gonna choose right here. And it gives me a best fit line for my data. And you can see that even though there's a lot of variation, there is an upward and increasing trend. So I can look at this line and say, gosh, as my mass got bigger, what happened? Flower was ejected further. There was more force when there was more mass. So I can use this to draw a simple conclusion. I want you to take a screenshot of this graph and include it in your lab. All right, thanks everybody.